Coach Andersey, uh, nine matches to one today over Buffalo. Uh, they got a new coaching staff, so things are changing over there for them. They got a lot of turnover with uh, guys as well. Not a lot of the guys that were on the squad two years ago last year are on the squad, but uh, you guys looked pretty good today. Um, 125, it seems to be the issue for you guys this year. You got a guy who fights real hard. He gets first takedowns on everybody. He got his first takedown on UTA for Michigan. He takes everybody down. He fights hard against Joey Dance. Uh, Alfredo Gray's a fighter, but he can't seem to win matches. How are you guys going to address that? And what do you do about 125 for Kent State? Well, it's something we've been trying to address with him for the last two years. First of all, you know he's he's here. He's overweight today. He's, he's running extra, trying to make that certainly doesn't help when you're winning a match and losing the third period. That's the first thing. Second thing we talk about is his matches are just like his life. And what I'm talking about that is until you get your whole life straightened, it's hard to have a come out and have a, and be able to just wrestle. Very few kids that you see that are they're the best. Their lives are pretty much organized, and they're able to translate that onto the wrestling mat. Where him, you know, he came in practice today with, without the right gear on. We sent him back out. Um, just little things that he hasn't, he, he refuses to, to take notice to. And when you go out in a match, and you're in a close match, and you don't take notice of the small things, that's what happens to you. And we've addressed it with them. We're going to continue addressing it with them. Um, you know, we have a kid coming in next year that is very focused on everything he does in life. He's focused now as a, as a 12th grader. He's going to come in and he, he'll, he'll figure out how to beat Alfredo because he'll stay focused for a full year where either Alfredo better figure this out or, you know, we use the term kicking rocks. He'll be out kicking rocks somewhere. Um, but it, it, it's frustrating. Because you can't been, deny the fight, though. The guy he, fights he so fight, hard. Listen, all our guys fight. Like, you know, most of the guys fight. I don't think we have a guy on our team that's going to go out there and lay, lay eggs. Um, you got guys that maybe don't feel well or you're going to have a bad match, but Mimo fought hard. He needs to learn how to get better wrestler now. So our guys fight. The problem is is you have to be, have a whole lot more than fight. Everyone in Division One, in my opinion, fought. Not a, but the good guys all fight. Very few times you're going to go out there and just be able to push someone around and them roll over for you. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's frustrating for us, but in the same sense, he has the he has ability. He has the fight. Now we got to tighten these other items up. And if not, like I said, he's going to be out kicking rocks because it's, it's frustrating for us to say if he was better than that kid. That's a that's a decent kid. That's a quality kid, but he just couldn't figure out a way to win. And we want we want guys that can figure out how to win those matches. One thirty three. Mac just kind of he seems to win. Mac's just scrappy. Kinda, he's smart. He's, he's really, really, really smart. smart when he wrestles. Um, he, he he has his few moves. Which the funny thing about it is is you know as a freshman you don't know which way you guys are going. He's probably worked at getting better more than anyone on our team this year. And I'm you know when I say getting better in the room, asking questions, putting himself in positions where maybe he walks out not getting a takedown, giving up a bunch of takedowns in practice, but he's like, well, I think I got better at this position. And that's what you have to do. I think, you know, he might have situations where he doesn't, they don't turn out right in a match, but I think down the road, if he continues to do what he's doing in our wrestling room and getting the extra workouts in and trying to learn, I, I, I would say I'm very, very happy where he's at right now because I think that he really wants to be, he wants to be good and he's doing the work to get good. And that'll all come. He's young. He'll have some time. You know, hopefully we'll be able to redshirt him next year, um, and he'll continue to learn and get better. So, he, you know, right now what he does, he knows how to win his matches. I think he's now trying to get better so he can add all that into one package. And like I said, he's young. He's a sophomore. He's a young sophomore. Yeah, too. yeah, he's a, he's a true sophomore. True sophomore, and he's young, for his, he's young for his grade. Tyler Small, he started the season out. Your whole team started the season out 0-3. He started the season out 0-3. He's your leader. He's your oldest guy in the lineup. You have no seniors on your in your yep. lineup. He's our oldest guy. Oldest guy. He's a junior. Yep. Uh, when you look at that and you see that first sobering week with Ryder, with Virginia and Virginia Tech, how much has he worked to work out of that funk? Well, first of all, Tyler's always had a slow start. Ever this is his third year. He's always started off slow. He wrestled at the um, at the very first uh, Hershey duels he went to. He lost to a Nebraska guy. He lost to an Illinois guy. He was better than those guys later in the year. But so he always gets off to a slow start. So we know that. Um, secondly, he had a really, really good opportunity this year to, to, to have an internship where he literally spent nine to ten hours a day sitting behind a desk, and he did that all summer. Um, the reason why he registered last year was for his degree because he's a very, very hard major. He had classes that were very, very challenging. We registered him because of that. He then parlayed that into this internship that he really wanted, and, and you know, ultimately, we're here about life. Wrestling is great, and you know, it's going to get you places, but he's a guy that's setting his life up, and this was important to him. And, because it was important, it was important to us. Now we have to get back in wrestling shape, and he's doing it slowly. Um, one of the things is, you know, he took second in the MAC, and he's a MAC champ, and I think he's ranked like fifth or sixth in the MAC. I kind of laugh at it because the kid knows how to win, and uh, 
he might not start off the strongest, but I know where he's going to be at the end of the year. Um, it was kind of like last year too. You know, he started, he started off really, really slow with the Edinburgh Open or the. We, we went to the Buffalo Open. We went to a few Open terms. He started off slow. By the end of the year, he won the Edinburgh. He won the um, that National Collegiate National Open. National Collegiate Open. He knows how to finish off a year. He's a slow, slow starter. And if you look at what he what his summer was like, you know, our goal next year is going to try to keep him around over the summer so he doesn't have a slow start. But I've got no. I got no issue with his because he's really smart. He does all the right things. He, he's he's he has that package. He just now needs to get himself in wrestling shape, which he is. And like I said, I don't care who he loses to from now until January. Once February comes around, Tyler Small is going to be a guy that we rely on heavily to win win us matches. And for him to get to the MAC tournament and see how he does there, because he's really really hard to wrestle, really hard to handle, um, and, and he's putting himself in a position to to be successful. The Palma Miller both with first period falls. Uh, the Palma is just like. He's just the guy is very inconsistent. He beats the snot out of Eric Grahalis, but loses to a couple guys I've never even heard of. Is, how do you guys? What do you got to do to work on consistency with uh, and, and with the Palma? I, I think it's just I think it's about age, and for him, it's his first year starting. So he's, he's you know he's almost like a freshman. I know he's a sophomore. I know at Edinburgh, you know he he had the he didn't have the opportunity to start. Some of these guys, their first year starting. It's our job now to teach them the intelligence to get through matches, and uh, and you look at some of the losses he had. Those losses are sooner or later going to make you better, and sometimes you're almost as a you're never glad a kid loses because there's no such, no such thing as a, a, a good loss. But I'm glad he lost then because if you look if you sit there and watch the match with him and say, well, this is why you lost. If those things continue to wrestle like that, you're going to continue to lose. Where sometimes kids, you know, they get a false sense of you know Ian Miller's freshman year was a very good example. He had some wins, but he wasn't making adjustments in matches, and at the national tournament caught got a hold of him and he lost. Where I think with De Palm, he's a really smart kid. He works really hard. He's a lot like our other, you know, like Mac and Tyler and, and Ian, where he's going to be very good by the time the end of the year comes. It's his first year starting. So you take some of those bad losses and, you you, you know, you say, you, know, you never want a kid to lose. But if he lost, I'm glad it's the beginning of the year, and I'm glad that he's in my office the next day saying, well, Coach, how did I lose? What do I got to do? You know, this happened, this happened, but I shouldn't lose those matches. So let's figure it out. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to figure those out right now, which, like I said, I'm – I'm happy with the three, four guys we have there because they're working hard and they want to win. And you know, someone like Alfredo, I don't know if he wants to win. I think he's more concerned about losing weight and and his comedian show and all these other things. Where you got to work, do the work in the wrestling room. You got to do the work in the video room. You got to do all that work so you can come out and have the chance to win. When you look at uh, uh, Ian at 157, Ian Miller, uh, he loses the match to uh, Virginia. Plays Butler, who I think is really tough. The guy's pretty yeah. legit. But a uh, great game plan by the University of Virginia coaches and Butler executed. Yep. I think that's a good loss. When you say bad losses, yep. I think it's a great loss for Ian to take. So do I. I my thing is, once again, and if you if you go back and watch that match, he let Butler. He took it to Ian. Well, I think he let he let he let Ian control the match, and Ian kind of you know he went out got the first takedown, and it was Ian never got his motor go, never got into his style of wrestling, and he lost. And that was the, that's the match we can use the rest of the year. If you continue to wrestle like this. And if you look, when he wrestled uh, Jordan, Wisconsin, he went out and Ian went out and went after him. Ian got put on his back for four at the end of the first period and still came back and won pretty big because he controlled it and he went at his pace. You know, we've gone back and forth, and uh, Ian's one of those kids that if he can keep his pace up, I don't know. I, I'm very excited to see him, if he can continue this way throughout the season into the national tournament, if he can continue it. I know you're going to have peaks and valleys, but right now he's wrestling about as good as I've ever seen a kid wrestle. Um, I'm talking from Navy until now. Even when he was at Mich the, the week before that, we, you know, he lost to the, the very first week, which took a loss in the first week. You know, it happens to all kinds of kids. Um, at this point moving forward, I don't think he's had a bad, I don't know too many bad moments within a match. We sit there and watch film, and I, I'm like, that's bad, you shouldn't do that, or here's what you gotta do differently. Most of his stuff is very, you know, most stuff we're working on is just real technical things against the real good kids that he's gonna have to figure out how to beat, which, like I said, he beat a Jordan, and he beat a Jordan handedly. Um, well, those are the kids we're now looking at to try to beat. We aren't worried about some of the other issues that we were a year ago, even last year. 65, Tyler Buckwalter. He's a genius in the classroom. Genius. And he and he's really a smart wrestler. That Yeah, he'll win a lot of And he won that match today. He came from behind. You know, you look at guys like that. Him and Villan have been splitting it. What are you guys going to do at 165? Well, this is the first time he's been able to wrestle all year. He's been hurt. In my opinion, he's our starter because of the reasons that you said. You know our team pretty well also. He's a genius in the classroom. He's a, he's very, very intelligent out there. He's not going to – a kid that's going to beat him is going to be better than him and be smarter than him. If you're – if they're the same ability, Tyler's going to figure out a way to win because he's so smart. And, uh, you know, that's part of, part of his wrestling. Like I said, once again, he's the first time he's ever started for us. It's his first match ever. He's only going to get better because he does all the right things. He, he 
controls his weight the right way. He lives the right lifestyle. He trains the right way. He wants to get better. He's asking questions. I'm just glad he got a match in against a kid he could beat off, coming off the injury he had. So, like I said, it's one of those things where he's wrestled. He, you know, doctors were like, well, he could, he, he was cleared to go, but they wanted to hold him back. And, and our thing was, let's get you out there and wrestle. You know, it, you know, you don't get better until you wrestle. So I think that match was good for him. We have Old Dominion, which I don't know how we match up with them next, but that's another conference match. Um, they just got upset by Easton. They're gonna, they're gonna be trying to prove themselves in the MAC, and I think we need to make that next step so we can show that we'll compete with a, a school like Old Dominion. I think he's ranked second or third in the conference right now. Martian Wheeler, I think these guys got all the physical tools. What do those guys got to do to? I know that they're guys. They're easily gonna qualify. I think both guys for the NCAA tournament at 74 and 84. Um, what well, do they got to do to K go and beat, win more than two or three matches? Caleb's the same thing as as a as a Marsh. He just needs to tighten his life. He is up. Marsh. Caleb is the same guy as as uh, um, Alfredo. He needs to tighten his life up. Um, the funny thing about it is, you look where Caleb came from and how he was his freshman year and his second year. He was a disaster. You know, he couldn't he couldn't find his books. His whole life was a disaster. So we're getting there, and it's taking time. Um, the one of the things about him is that I think he really he he, he listens to you, and. I think his mistakes are sincere mistakes. And I don't, you know, when I'm talking about mistakes is coming late, doing things that we have to punish him for. I really think he doesn't want them to happen. He just, he doesn't, he never had the lifestyle when he was younger to learn how to do those things. So now we're trying to get him ready for life and wrestling's the perfect way, but he's come, a, a, see, like I said, we joke around about in our office, how far he's come from three years ago until now. Um, I just think we just need to continue progressing and staying healthy. He's one of those guys that has to stay healthy to be competitive. Um, and hopefully he can do that throughout the year. But like I said, I'm, ex I'm excited about our team because they're young and they all want to get better. Sam, talk about Sam Wheeler a little bit. <laughs> Sam is an he's a freak. He's a freak. He's, he's an, an absolute freak. athletic. He's yeah. built. If you go to like uh, Rome, Italy, or you go to Greece or anywhere where there's like ancient statues, yeah. the guys yeah. are all built like Sam Wheeler. Yeah. And he eats chicken wings and he eats greasy food and mayonnaise. And like his eating habits are bad. He's just lazy at times. Today was a lazy match. He knew he could win and he was lazy. And it's something that we. Uh, we always challenge him on. We got him off there, and the first thing we talked about being lazy and wrestling like that. You can't wrestle. You can't. You can't beat a good kid like that. And he knows it. The one thing is with Sam is, you know, he kind of has a switch. He knows how to bigger the bigger matches he gets up for. Um, but you know, he's one of those guys. The last year as a freshman, kind of fell apart of the MAC tournament. I don't want to say fell apart at the national tournament. He just didn't have a good national tournament. He, he wrestled good kids. Um, he's a second year guy now. He's starting to understand how we do things and. And he knows our expectations. And today it was a, it was a win for him. Um, he didn't cut his weight the right way uh, off of Thanksgiving, and it kind of showed a little bit. He got a little bit lazy when he's wrestling. But like I said, he, you know, he, I think he's five or six and one or seven and one. He, he he's lost. I think his one loss is to a ranked guy who's ranked fourth or fifth in the country now. So it, because a world champ he lost to. Yeah, I, I, you tell me who it is. The guys, really good. Ofer Bernstein. Yes. So he's good. So he lost to a good kid. Besides that, he's beaten everyone. I don't want to say handily, but he's beaten everyone. Huntley pretty, was a close match, but that was yeah, overtime. It was, yeah, Huntley was another good kid he beat, but all his other regular matches he, he's beaten pretty, pretty good. So we just got to keep him going. How do you address the, you know, the diet issue when you say that about Sam? I've seen him eat like fries yeah. after a weigh-in before. I think like things I've never seen anybody eat after a weigh-in. How do you address well, that? Well, we with control them? what they eat after weigh-ins. I can't go home with these kids and, and eat, make their dinner and eat for, and take them and show. You know, we show them, we tell them what to eat, but we can't. I can't put it in his mouth. Um, I think with Sam, it's just one of those things where he's learning that eating bad does not make you Deep a great wrestler. Deep fried aren't good for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think that's, you know, it's part of, it's part of your, his, his heritage, where he comes from, his, his family. That's what they eat. He needs to be able to change his lifestyle if he wants to, you know, get to that top at some point. I think he does that. He just, it's, it's a learning process. Cole Baxter. I think that this guy is, I, I see him sometimes, he looks nails. He wins the duel. Against Michigan for you when he yeah. when he catches the guy on his back at yeah. 197, but uh, you look at him and, and what's that guy got to do to get to the national tournament? Well, he's another kid. He's 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 a genius also. He's he's studying to be a dentist. Um, one of the smarter kids we've ever had on our program along with Cole Baxter and with uh, um, Buck Tyler Buckwalter. Um, he's going to win a lot of matches because of how smart he wrestles. Um, once again, he's a first time starter for us. First home match. He's going to get better the more he wrestles, um, the more he learns, the more he gets himself in positions so that we can go back and teach him how to wrestle through. Last year, he was out the whole year with a, he had knee surgery, put him out for the whole year. It was one of those things where we were very upset. I think he was upset because it was a great year to, to train under Dustin Kilgore and to, for Dustin to get him tougher. Um, you know, two years ago, he beat the guy from OU two or three times. Um, Wellington. Wellington, handedly. Now, Wellington has made great leaps and jumps within our conference and nationally. 
but I still think that, you know, if you talk to, you said have a conversation with Buck Walter, he thinks he can beat all those guys. So he just needs to get going throughout the year. And it, it doesn't hurt us that he has some time before he's going to actually have to see them. So he'll learn how to win matches like that. It's just going to take him time. And uh, once again, those kind of kids, he does everything right. He's a good, great kid. He eats the right way. He, you know, he, he studies the right thing. He does all the right things. Where Those are the ones that win, lose, or draw, I'm glad to have him on my team. Mimo Lytle, um, if you look at it, Mimo Lytle is very capable. He loses a 2-0 decision to Adam Kuhn. Adam Kuhn's knocked off pretty much everybody now. He just yeah. beat Gwizikowski of NC State last night. When you see he can wrestle with a guy like Kuhn, and then he loses some of these other matches where I'm scratching my head, I'm like, it's like the guy forgets how to wrestle. Yeah. Would you? Would that, would that be the best way to describe Mimo? He forgets how to wrestle? He's a heavyweight. I don't know if he ever really learned how to wrestle. We're trying to, the last few years we've been trying to teach him how to wrestle. Um, you know, sometimes these heavyweights, it's, if you weigh 280 pounds or 275 pounds like he does and you're a great athlete, you're not wrestling. You're playing football. I hate to say it. So the guys we're getting, sometimes they don't have the, the, as much athletic ability as they have with other kids on our team. And he just doesn't have the mat lay. He doesn't have the match presence. We call it common sense wrestling. He lacks a lot of it. That also, I think, has to do with just getting more matches in, getting more experience. Um, he, he worked really, really hard, made about a billion mistakes in that match, but he worked hard. So we take that and was, all right, you're working hard, now let's try to work hard at the right things and stop making so many mistakes. And like I said, he's a freshman. Um, is he, Right now, he's our only guy. We have other guys, but he's our guy. So we're going to go with him. We're going to try to get him better. And I think it's one of those things where we need to, hopefully he can continue to learn and get better at just position. There was one point where he hit one of the nicest snatch singles I've, I've seen for heavyweight. And when he was trans, when he was making his transition, he totally let go of the leg to come up and... That's just stuff that shouldn't happen yet, but it still is with him, so we have to make sure we get him in those positions and, and you work through him. Um, he's a heavyweight, man. They need, they, 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 he, doesn't, he hasn't been wrestling as long as a guy like Mac McGuire or Tyler Small or Ian Miller, so we have to get him in positions that normally kids don't get into our room. We have to put him through those and say, this is how you finish a single leg. This is how you finish a double leg. This is how you get when you hit a headlock and you have a guy in the back, you squeeze him and, and finish it off rather than rolling through. Um, like I said, it... it he worked really hard, and that's the one good thing. It's probably the hardest we've seen him work all year, and, and we got to go off of that. We got to take that good thing and, and say, "All right, you're working hard. Let's now work work hard and positive towards things that will make you a better wrestler."